Hi everyone, welcome to this episode of Carpet Labs. Um, today, in today's video, we're going to be talking about how we name alkanoic acids. Okay, in the previous video, we, we met this family of hydrocarbons, uh, which contain the carboxyl C-double-O-H group. Okay, so which looks like this, if we draw it out a bit more exactly, where it's attached to some other kind of group, whether it's a hydrogen or a carbon chain of, of some length. Okay, we looked at um, comparing them with alkanols and we looked at um, their properties. Now we want to, what we want to be able to do is to learn how to, um, how we construct the names for these compounds. So it's just going to be a quick little tutorial in how we do that. Okay, so let's say that I've got uh, this substance here. Okay, it looks like this. Alright, and so I want to come up with its name. Alright, so a couple of things that we need to be aware of is that um, the, when, we're look, when we're looking at this, that the C-double-O-H group uh, counts in the carbon chain. Okay, so we're always talking about with naming hydrocarbons that you have to uh, number or kind of consider the longest possible carbon chain, that the C-double-O-H group as its function group must be a part of what we count. Okay, and the second thing that we need to be aware of is that we count from the end that has that C-double-O-H group. That is, it becomes carbon number one. Okay, so when we're looking at this particular substance here, um, we've got, we've got well, four carbons, one, two, three, and four. So this one counting in our carbon chain, and we're going to number from this end. Okay, so that would be our numbering. Um, but the, the last kind of thing that we need to be able to do, or, or the, to, to make things a bit easier for us, is that we don't number uh, the C-double-O-H group. group. Okay, so we, we would give it a number, but what we we're going to see is, okay, so it's got four carbons, so it's got the prefix of but. Because it's, got the alkan because it's an alkanoic acid, um, what it has is this particular um, prefix, uh, suffix. So but anoic acid is what we would call this substance. Okay, now what I'm saying here is that this is not one butanoic acid. Okay, the reason for that is, remember in the past we talked about the fact that numbers are there to uh, remove the ambiguity. They're there to help us to be clear about exactly which substance we're talking about. But we always know, we know, as I mentioned in the previous video, that this group is always on the end. It will never, it can never be in the, you know, a C double OH and then something else. Okay, that it's always on the end. So it's always going to be at carbon number one. So therefore, it's redundant. Okay, so we would say it's redundant. It's not necessary because we we know that by its chemistry that it has to be at the end. It can't be anywhere else. Okay, um, let's. Have another look at another um, another example. Uh, another couple of a couple of, of quick examples. Okay, so let's say that we have uh, this compound. Okay, so we can identify that we've got one, two, three, four, five carbons. Now, just to, for the sake of completeness, so we get used to being able to number these things. So we would number from this end. Uh, a car when it, we've got five carbons in a chain, then that's pent, and we know that it should have anoic acid as the rest of my name. Okay, and it looks like this. All right, now let's let's have a, a, a quick look at um, a branched alkanoic acid. Now the dot point here only means that you only need to be able to name acids like this, but I want to show you why being able to still number these is important. Okay, so let's say we've got. Um, Actually, I might draw it out a little bit more. I'll use the full structural formula just to kind of give you a, a bit of an idea here. Now, I'm just going to still write that as C-double-O-H. But I'm going to, and I'm going to do that. Okay, so it's kind of, I suppose it's a little bit of a hybrid or a little bit of a mashup of um, full and abbreviated structures, but you can see I'm, I'm kind of working within a small space here. Okay, so... What I'm saying is, is, just looking at the previous rules, that um, so this is a branched example. What the previous rule is that we need to include 
our CWH group in our carbon, longest carbon chain. Okay, so I, the longest carbon chain that I can trace is three carbons, including this one. So I can either do one, two, three, or one, two, three. Okay, so three um, is pro. Okay, um, now I know that it's got, um, it should be an anoic acid, okay, because that's the family that it belongs to, so it'll be propanoic acid. But what I want to be able to do is let, if I say that this is my carbon chain here, I want to be able to articulate that I have this group off the side. Okay, so I'm going to number from this end, one, two, three. Okay, and I know that if I've got one car a carbon group with one carbon, that it's a methyl group, and it's on carbon number two, so it's two methyl propanoic acid. Okay, so we've built from the same kind of base, we've numbered our um, using our numbering, we've been able to name our branch, um, and then, um, yeah, and so we've, we've um, put the number in there, the, our locant, to be able to tell us where it is. All right, just to finish up, I'm just going to do a, an a exercise in reverse, where I'm going to write, I'm, I've been given a name, and then I'm going to build it from there. Okay, um, so I've got hexanoic acid. I'm told that that's its name. Okay, so I know from hex that I'm talking about six carbons. Okay, and I know because it's an anoic acid that it's going to, I'm going to have a CWH group on the end. Okay, so six carbons. Okay, so what, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, and then I know because I don't have, I'm, I'm, I'm not told about any other groups that everything else will be hydrogen. And okay, so there's our structure of hexanoic acid. All right. Keep going with the practice questions. Thanks very much for watching. Bye for now.